Never seen anything like it, have you? The human's voice broke through the tense silence, a mixture of awe and a strangely comforting curiosity in his tone. Standing beside me, his gaze fixed upon the remnants of our once great capital, he somehow found the words that escaped my own kind. No, I replied, my voice barely above a whisper. We never imagined destruction on such a scale. Our technology, our art, our very way of life, all lost to the Draxian onslaught. The human clad in the armor of his people, a stark contrast to my own ethereal form, nodded slowly. We've heard the stories, seen the aftermath from afar. But standing here, seeing it with my own eyes, it's a lot to take in. The Draxians had come like a plague, their ships darkening our skies, their weapons raining fire upon our cities. We, a peaceful people who had not known war for generations, were unprepared for such violence, for shields, designed to protect us from the elements, crumbled under their assault. Our pleas for mercy, broadcast on all frequencies, were met only with silence or laughter. As we stood amidst the ruins, the human's presence was a stark reminder of how isolated we had become in our time of need. His ship, one of a small fleet that had arrived unexpectedly, was the first sign of external life we had seen in months. The galaxy, it seemed, had turned its back on us, leaving us to face our demise alone. Why did you come? I asked, turning to face him. The question that had been burning in my heart since their arrival, why did your people decide to help us? He smiled, a gesture I had come to understand as a sign of kindness among his kind. Because it's the right thing to do. Because in the face of such darkness, we choose to be the light. And because no one deserves to face extinction alone. It was then I realized the depth of the bond forming between our species. The humans, with their fierce determination and unwavering courage, brought more than just hope. They brought the promise of resistance. They had not just ventured into the unknown to save strangers. They had come to unite against a common enemy to fight for a future where all could thrive in peace. Together, we began to plan, drawing upon the humans' experience in warfare and our own knowledge of the Draxians. It was a daunting task, coordinating a defense with what little we had left, but the humans' optimism was infectious. They spoke of strategies and tactics, of ways to disrupt the Draxian supply lines and weaken their forces. For every problem, they offered solutions. For every doubt, encouragement. As we worked, a sense of camaraderie developed among us. We shared stories of our worlds, our cultures, and our families. I learned of the humans' resilience, of their struggles and triumphs, of their undying hope in the face of adversity. In return, I shared the beauty of our world, the richness of our history, and the depth of our science. The days turned to weeks, and slowly, our plans took shape. We repaired old defenses, built new weapons, and trained our people in the art of war. The humans stood by us every step of the way, their presence a constant source of strength. And then the day came. The Draxians, confident in their superiority, launched a final assault, intending to wipe us from existence. But they had not counted on the humans, on the unity forged in the fires of desperation. Together, we faced the Draxians. Our combined forces a testament to the power of alliance and friendship. The battle was fierce, the losses heavy on both sides. But in the end, we prevailed. The Draxians retreated, their invincibility shattered, their threat diminished. For the first time in months, we dared to hope, to dream of a future where our world could heal and flourish once more. Standing on the battlefield, surrounded by the scars of war, I looked at the humans, our saviors, our friends, and I felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. Thank you, I said, my voice steady and clear. You've given us more than just assistance. You've given us a chance to rebuild, to live. The human beside me placed a hand on my shoulder, a gesture of solidarity. We're in this together, he said, his gaze meeting mine. Today, we fought not as separate species, but as one people. And as long as the stars shine, that bond will never be broken. In that moment, I understood the true meaning of courage and unity. It was not the absence of fear, but the decision to stand together in the face of the unknown, to forge a path of light in the darkness. We thought it was all over until the humans arrived. And with them, they brought the dawn of a new era, a testament to the indomitable spirit of those who refused to be conquered. In the quiet aftermath of the battle, 
As I stood amidst the remnants of what was once a beacon of hope, a human approached, his gait steady, his face etched with the lines of countless stories yet untold. You know, he began, his voice carrying the weight of distant worlds. When we first received the distress signal, we thought it was a lost cause. But there's something about your planet, something about your people. I turned to face him, my curiosity peaked. And what is that? I asked, genuinely intrigued by the perspective of this otherworldly ally who had come to our aid in our darkest hour. He smiled, a simple upward curve of his lips that seemed to light up the devastation around us. Resilience, he replied. You might not see it now amidst all this, he gestured to the ruins that surrounded us. But from the moment we arrived, we saw it. A fire burning in the hearts of every one of your kind, refusing to be extinguished. I pondered his words, reflecting on the journey that had brought us to this point. The arrival of the humans had been a turning point, a sliver of light in an endless night. The ship, sleek and unassuming, had pierced the veil of despair that hung over our world, their presence a mystery that had sparked both hope and skepticism in equal measure. Why did you come? I found myself asking again, not out of doubt, but out of a desire to understand the motive behind their seemingly selfless act. The human's gaze met mine, steady and sincere, because once we were like you, he said softly, faced with the brink of extinction, fighting a battle that seemed unwinnable. And in our darkest moment, help came from an unexpected source. We were given a second chance, and we made a vow to pass it on, to be the beacon for others as it was for us. His words resonated within me, a testament to the interconnectedness of all beings, regardless of origin. And now you've passed it on to us, I murmured, the magnitude of their gesture slowly dawning on me. Yes, he agreed, a note of determination in his voice. And together we've turned the tide. But this is just the beginning. There's much to be done, worlds to rebuild, alliances to forge. The universe is vast, and who knows what other threats lurk in the shadows. But one thing is certain, he paused, his eyes locking onto mine. We'll face them together. In that moment, I understood the true essence of the human strength. It was not in their technology or their weapons, but in their spirit their unwavering commitment to stand with those in need, to fight not just for their own survival, but for the survival of all. As we stood there, amidst the ruins of a battle hard fought and won, I felt a surge of gratitude towards these remarkable beings who had crossed the vastness of space to stand by our side. The road ahead would be long and fraught with challenges, but with the humans as our allies, I knew we were no longer alone. For together, we would rebuild our world, restore its beauty and its glory, and in doing so, forge a new path forward, not just for our two species, but for all the inhabitants of the cosmos. The human extended his hand, an offer of friendship and solidarity, and I took it. The simple act symbolizing the dawn of a new era, an era of cooperation and unity, where the lines that divided us were erased, replaced by the bonds of shared purpose and destiny. As we turned to join the others, I realized that the arrival of the humans was not just a pivotal moment in our history, but a defining one. It was the moment we learned that no matter how vast the universe, no matter how insurmountable the odds, we are never truly alone. And in that unity, in that shared resolve to protect and preserve life in all its forms, there lies our greatest strength. We thought it was all over until the humans arrived. And with them, they brought not just hope, but a future illuminated by the promise of unity and the enduring power of the human spirit. As I stood there, facing the human delegation for the first time, the air was thick with a mix of anticipation and uncertainty. Their leader stepped forward, a gesture I assumed was meant to be welcoming, yet all I could feel was an overwhelming sense of the greetings, he said, his voice emanating from a device that translated his words into a form I could understand albeit with a slight delay that made the interaction feel disjointed. I attempted to respond, using the most formal greeting our culture reserved for significant occasions, but the words seemed to hang awkwardly in the space between. The device around his waist crackled slightly as it translated my message back to him, and I saw a flicker of confusion cross his face before being quickly replaced by a smile. I think we're going to need a bit more practice with this. He chuckled, tapping the translator device. The humans had brought with them technology that was both fascinating and, in moments like these, frustratingly inadequate. 
Communication was our first and greatest hurdle. Our languages were not just different in sounds but in concepts, in the way we expressed time, emotions, and even greetings. What was a simple hello for them could be interpreted as a lengthy poetic expression in our language, filled with references to our world's history and beauty. Despite these initial missteps, there was a genuine effort from both sides to understand and be understood. We shared simple words at first, pointing to objects around us and then to the sky, establishing a basic vocabulary that bridged the humans were patient. Their fascination with our culture evident in their eager, if somewhat clumsy, attempts to mimic our gestures and expressions. I was struck by their resolve, by the openness with which they approached this first encounter. They had come to our world not with demands or expectations, but with a willingness to learn, to help in whatever way they could. It was a trait I had not anticipated, a willingness to put aside differences to focus on the common goal of survival and mutual respect. As the hours passed, our initial awkward exchanges gave way to a more fluid dialogue, facilitated by the ever-improving translations of their devices. We began to share not just words, but stories. I told them of our world's history, of the great achievements of our people, and the beauty that once was before the devastation. In return, they spoke of Earth, their blue planet filled with diverse cultures and landscapes, and of their own struggles and triumphs. The breakthrough came when one of the humans, in an attempt to express solidarity, shared a story of their planet's own close encounter with destruction and how they had come together to overcome it. The device struggled to capture the nuances of the tale, but the emotion behind it was unmistakable. It was a story of resilience, of unity against a common threat, themes that resonated deeply with my own experiences. In that moment, something shifted. The barrier of language and culture, once seemingly insurmountable, began to crumble, revealing the universal truths that bound us together. We were different, yes, but in our hopes, our fears, and our dreams we found. The meeting, which had begun with uncertainty, ended with laughter and shared determination. We had found a way to communicate, to connect, not just through technology, but through the shared language of empathy and understanding. As the humans prepared to leave, promising to return with more aid and support. I felt a sense of optimism I had not known for a long time. The first contact with the humans had not just opened a door to potential salvation for my people. It had rekindled a flame of hope that had been all but extinguished. In their willingness to help, in their resolve to stand with us against the darkness, I saw a new path forward, a chance for a future where together we could rebuild not just our world, but forge a friendship that would last across the stars. In the weeks following our initial contact, the bond between our species grew stronger, fueled by a shared determination to reclaim our world. It was during one of our strategy sessions that a human, whom I had come to know as Captain Larson, presented a plan that was as daring as it was brilliant. We've been analyzing the patterns of the invaders, he said, spreading out a holographic map of our planet, and we think we've found a way to hit them where it hurts. I leaned in, studying the flashing points on the map. Each represented a recent attack by the invaders, their movements now predictable to the trained eye of human strategists. You're suggesting we intercept them here? I pointed to a narrow valley that had once been a place of great natural beauty, now a strategic choke. Exactly, Larson replied with a nod. It's risky, but with your knowledge of the terrain and our tactical support, we can set a trap that they won't see coming. The idea of setting a trap in a place that held so many memories for my people was difficult to accept, but desperation lent clarity to our decision-making. The humans had brought with them not just hope, but the promise of turning the tide in a war we had all but a Preparations began at once. Human engineers worked alongside our own technicians, combining our advanced shielding technology with their kinetic weapons to create a defense system unlike any our world had seen. It was a testament to the power of collaboration, each side bringing their strengths to bear against a common As the day of the ambush drew near, I found myself working closely with Larson, his team, and a squad of humans who had volunteered for the mission. Despite the gravity of our task, there was an undercurrent of camaraderie among us, a sense of unity that transcended species. We trained together, shared meals, and exchanged stories of our homes, our families, and what we hope to achieve. 
The night before the operation, Larson and I stood overlooking the valley. The stars above us a silent testament to the vastness of the universe. You know, he said, breaking the silence back on Earth, we have a saying. In unity, there is strength. Never thought I'd see it in action like this. I smiled, moved by his words. We have a similar saying, I replied. It's a reminder that no matter how dark the night, the dawn will come if we stand together. The next day, as the invader ships descended into the valley, our trap was sprung. Energy shields powered by our technology flared to life, creating a barrier that funneled the invaders into the kill zone. Human fighters piloting ships that danced through the sky with a grace that belied their deadly intent. Struck with precision, their attacks coordinated with our ground foot. The battle was fierce, the outcome uncertain, until the very end. But as the last invader ship fell, crashing into the valley that had become their grave, a cheer went up from our ranks, a sound of victory that echoed off the mountains and reached up to the stone. In the aftermath, as we surveyed the battlefield, the cost of our victory became apparent. Many had fallen, humans and my own people alike, their sacrifices a stark reminder of the price of freedom. Yet, in that moment of reflection, there was also a profound sense of achievement, a knowledge that we had faced the impossible and emerged victorious. The humans had been instrumental in our victory, their tactics, their technology, and most importantly, their spirit, proving to be the turning point in our struggle. But beyond the strategies and the battles, it was the trust between us, the willingness to stand together against a common enemy that truly turned the tide. As we began the long process of rebuilding, of healing the scars left by the invasion, the alliance between our species grew stronger. We had fought side by side, shared in the grief of loss and the joy of victory, and in doing so, had forged a bond that would not easily be broken. The humans remained on our world, helping us to rebuild, not as conquerors, but as friends and allies. Together, we looked to the future, a future where our combined strength would stand as a beacon to the galaxy, a testament to what can be achieved when different worlds come together in the name of peace and unity. We thought it was all over until the humans arrived. And with them, they brought not just the means to fight back, but a new vision for our world, a promise of a brighter tomorrow built on the foundation of mutual respect and indomitable courage. The air was heavy with anticipation, electric with the silent prayers of those about to face their destiny. As I stood beside Captain Larson, watching our combined forces prepare for what would be the final confrontation with the invaders, I couldn't help but marvel at the journey that had brought us to this point. You know, Larson said, breaking the silence, when this all started, I couldn't have imagined standing side by side with a species from another world, fighting a common enemy. I nodded my thoughts, echoing his. And yet here we are, not just allies, but friends. The plan was simple in its daring. We would use the last of our resources to launch a direct assault on the invader stronghold, a fortress that had once been the heart of our civilization. The humans, with their uncanny ability to innovate under pressure, had devised a series of explosive devices powerful enough to breach the fortress's defenses. It's going to be dangerous, Larson continued, his gaze scanning the horizon where the enemy awaited. But we've got a surprise for them. Your people's knowledge of the terrain, combined with a few tricks up our sleeve, should give us the edge we need. The hours leading up to the attack were a blur of preparation and resolve. Humans and my people worked together, setting charges, coordinating strategies, and sharing quiet moments of camaraderie amidst the looming shadow of battle. As the signal to advance was given, I found myself at the forefront, Larson by my side. The battlefield was a chaos of light and sound, the air filled with the roar of weapons and the cries of the fallen. Yet through it all, our forces moved as one, a testament to the unity that had been forged in the fire of adversity. The moment of truth came as we reached the fortress's main gate, the explosive charges set with precision by the human engineers detonating in a blinding flash of light. The walls, thought to be impregnable, crumbled before us, opening a path to the heart of the enemy's power. The battle that followed was the fiercest I had ever witnessed. Humans and my people, fighting shoulder to shoulder, pushed forward through the breach, overcoming the defenders with a relentless tide of courage and determination. 
And then, just as it seemed the tide of battle was turning in our favor, the unthinkable happened. The invaders, in a last desperate act, activated a doomsday device, a weapon capable of destroying not just us, but the very planet we fought to save. In that moment, as despair threatened to overwhelm us, it was the humans who rallied, refusing to accept defeat. With a bravery that bordered on the reckless, Larson and his team fought their way to the device, disarming it with mere seconds to spare. As the news of the victory spread, a cheer rose from the ranks of our combined forces, a sound so powerful it seemed to shake the very heavens. We had done it. Against all odds, we had won. In the aftermath of the battle, as we gathered to honor the fallen and celebrate our hard-won freedom, I couldn't help but reflect on the incredible journey that had brought us to this point. The humans, once strangers from another world, had become our saviors, our allies, our friends. The day we thought it was all over was the day the humans arrived. I said to Larson, as we looked out over a world that was once again ours, he smiled, a look of pride and satisfaction on his face. Together, we proved that it's not over until we say it's over. And this, he gestured to the celebrating crowds around us, this is just the beginning. As we turned to join the festivities, I realized that this victory was more than just the end of a war. It was the dawn of a new era, one where humanity and my people would walk side by side into a future filled with endless possibilities. Together, we had faced the darkness and emerged victorious, a testament to the unbreakable spirit of those who fight not just for survival, but for the right to live in peace. And so, as the stars above twinkled with the light of distant worlds, I knew that the story of our alliance, of our friendship, would be told for generations to come. For in the end, we had done more than just win a war. We had opened the door to a new chapter in the history of the galaxy, one where hope, unity, and the indomitable will to protect life reigned supreme. We thought it was all over until the humans arrived. And with them, they brought not just hope, but a future illuminated by the promise of unity and the enduring power of the human spirit. In the golden light of dawn, as I walked through the streets of what was once a battleground, now bustling with the sounds of reconstruction, I couldn't help but marvel at the transformation. It's incredible, isn't it? I said to Larson, who walked beside me, his gaze taking in the vibrant scene around us. It is, he agreed, a note of pride in his voice. Who would have thought, when we first arrived, that we'd be here to see this? The world around us was a testament to resilience and unity. Buildings that had once been ruins were now restored, their architecture a blend of human innovation and our own aesthetic, symbolizing the fusion of our cultures. The streets were alive with the chatter of children, human and my own kind, playing together in harmony, a sight that warmed my heart. We learned so much from each other. I mused thinking back on the days of struggle and the nights of planning that had led us here, not just about technology or strategy, but about what it means to truly stand together. Larson nodded, his eyes reflective. We found strength in our differences, built a foundation on what unites us. It's something I'll never forget. As we continued our walk, we passed a group of humans and my people, working side by side to plant a garden in what had once been a no man's land. The symbolism wasn't lost on me. From the ashes of war, new life was sprouting, a living promise of peace and growth. The alliance we forged, I began, gesturing towards the workers. It's more than just a pact between worlds. It's a beacon for the galaxy, a message that together we're stronger. And it's a message that's spreading, Larson added, a smile playing on his lips. Other species have reached out, inspired by what we've achieved here. The universe is taking notice. That thought filled me with hope. After the darkness we had faced, the future was bright, not just for our world, but for all who shared the cosmos, the Alliance, born out of necessity, had evolved into something profound, a union that transcended borders and sp We've been given a second chance, I said, stopping to look at Larson, gratitude and resolve in my gaze. Not just to survive, but to thrive. To create a society that values peace over power, cooperation over con- He placed a hand on my shoulder, a gesture that had become a sign of our friendship and it's a chance we won't waste. Together, we'll write a new chapter for the galaxy, one where hope guides our way. As we resumed our walk, I thought about the lessons we had learned from the brink of extinction, 
We had seen the best and worst of what beings are capable of, but in the end, it was compassion, understanding, and the unwavering will to do what's right that had saved us. Looking around at the world we were building, I realized that the true victory wasn't just in overcoming the invaders, but in the unity we had found in the aftermath. The humans, with their relentless optimism and boundless curiosity, had not just helped us win a war. They had shown us a new way to look at the universe, at ourselves. The journey ahead would be filled with challenges. But as long as we stood together, there was no obstacle we couldn't overcome, no dream too distant. The alliance between our worlds was a beacon of hope, a testament to the enduring spirit of those who dare to imagine a better future. And as the sun climbed higher in the sky, casting its light on a world reborn, I knew that this was just the beginning. For in the hearts of all who walked these streets in the laughter of the children who played without fear lay the seeds of a new era, an era of exploration and discovery, of friendship and peace, forged in the fire of adversity, but standing strong in the light of a new dawn. We thought it was all over until the humans arrived, and with them they brought not just the dawn of a new day, but the promise of a brighter future for us all. As the day waned, casting long shadows over a world reborn, I found myself on the outskirts of the city, gazing up at the stars. Beside me, Larson shared the quiet moment, a rare pause in the flurry of activity that had become our daily, you know, I said, breaking the silence before you arrived, I often looked at the stars and felt a profound sense of isolation. Now I see them as beacons of hope, reminders of the friendships waiting among them. Larson turned to me, his face illuminated by the fading light. The galaxy is vast, filled with untold stories and uncharted worlds. What we've started here, this is just the beginning. There are countless others out there, perhaps facing their own struggles, waiting for a light to pierce their dark. The thought filled me with a sense of purpose, a yearning to explore the unknown reaches of space. Not as conquerors, but as emissaries of peace. We have a chance to spread the message of hope you've brought us, I continued, to show the galaxy that unity and cooperation aren't just ideals, but the foundation of a better future. Larson nodded, his gaze returning to the heavens. Humanity has always been driven by the desire to explore, to reach out and connect. And now, we do so not alone, but with friends who share our vision. The adventures ahead, the worlds will discover, the alliances will forge, they'll be... As we stood together, two beings from different worlds united by a shared dream, I realized that the future was a canvas upon which we would paint a masterpiece of collaboration. The challenges we had faced had not only tested our resolve, but had revealed the best of what we could be when we stood together. The enduring message of hope, I mused. It's a powerful force, one that can change the course of history, transform the fabric of the galaxy. And it's a message we'll carry with us, Larson added, into every corner of the universe, to every being that yearns for freedom, for a chance to live in peace. We'll be there, standing shoulder to shoulder, as proof that even in the darkest times hope. As night fell and the stars shone brightly above, I felt a deep sense of gratitude for the journey that had brought us here, for the friendships forged in the fires of adversity. The humans, with their indomitable spirit, had not only saved our world, but had opened our eyes to the possibilities that lay among the stars. The future was a realm of endless potential, a galaxy waiting to be explored with humanity by our side. Together, we would embark on new adventures, face whatever challenges lay ahead, and build a legacy of peace and unity that would... And in that moment, looking up at the infinite expanse above, I knew that the story of our two species, of our alliance and our hope, was just beginning before in the heart of every being, whether gazing up at the stars from the surface of an alien world or the familiar ground of Earth, lay the unquenchable desire to reach out, to connect, and to dream of a hopeful future.